Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is DJ Martin, church pastor here at Parker Ford Church. Whether you're a member at Parker Ford or just watching this online, we're so glad to have you with us. Today, we're continuing in our ongoing midweek series that we're calling Get Dressed. And what we've been doing is we've been tracking the theme of clothing throughout the scriptures. We spent the first four weeks going back and forth between Isaiah and some of the writings of Paul and seeing how Paul took themes from Isaiah and developed them in his own writings. Today we're going to continue looking at the theme of clothing in scripture, but we're going to move to some of the teachings of Jesus. This week we'll be looking at one of his most famous parables, and next week we'll be looking at the Sermon on the Mount and some clothing illustrations that he uses in both. So uh, join me in prayer as we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us today through the story of the prodigal son and the imagery of clothing that we find in that. Father, we thank you for your word and just continue to invite you to teach us. Your word is such a fun, amazing gift to us. And I say fun because we can spend our whole lives uh, searching the scriptures, wrestling with it, and always we're gonna find new things when we come with an open mind, open heart to learn and grow. And so I pray that today would be one of those days where we would get to experience joy as we encounter a story that many of us have probably heard many times. And so bring it in a new and fresh way to us today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I'm calling today's teaching The Father's Robe. And this comes from Luke chapter 15, the famous uh, story of the prodigal sons. You've probably heard this many times, but I hope uh, to bring some fresh insight as we continue with our theme of clothing. Also, what I want to do is I want to trace this story back to Genesis 3, where the first imagery of humans being clothed by God appears in the Bible. And I want to look at and compare these two stories, the Adam and Eve being clothed by God and the prodigal son being clothed by his father, and look at how they speak to one another. Luke 15, we'll pick up in verse 11 at the beginning of this story. And Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Now you may have heard this, many teachers have pointed this out, but essentially what the younger son is saying to the father is, I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead so that I could get my inheritance. I wish you were dead out of the way so I could get what's coming to me. And so he says to his dad, essentially, I wish you were dead. And the father, very graciously, very very generously and compassionately, actually gives him his share of the inheritance. But notice he divides it up between them. So the older son also receives his inheritance at that point. Verse 13, not many days later, So this is just a few days later. The younger son gathered all he had. He takes this inheritance, all the money, all the possessions, the worldly possessions he has, and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. In other words, he packed his bags, he gets his credit card, and he hits the road for Vegas or L.A. or New York, wherever it was that he was going to party and have a good time. Verse 14, and when he had spent everything, You know, when you're living like that, money doesn't last long. He's not bringing anything in. He's just spending it lavishly on on everything. And so he runs out of money, and then a severe famine arose in that country. So not only does he run out of money, but there's really no prospects for him to get a good-paying job. He can't work um, probably in the, the vineyard that he grew up in. He couldn't, he couldn't do that in this land because there's a famine. And so not only does he run out of money, but he's really got no ability to make income. And he began to be in need. Verse 15, so he went and hired himself out, the only way, the only place he could get a job, to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. Now this is a young Jewish man. It doesn't get any lower than this. Not only has he lost his inheritance and squandered it all, not only has he shamed himself um, through the way that he's treated his father, not only has he abandoned his family, his brother, uh, his lifestyle, and lost everything he has now, the only way that he can survive is by, by working with pigs, this unclean animal. Verse 16, And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, but no one would give him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. 
So he's remembering what it's like at his house. At his house, his father takes care of even the lowest servants. Even the lowest servants are fed and taken care of. But here he says, I perish with hunger. Verse 18, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, now listen to this imagery, the imagery of clothing. Bring quickly the best robe. This is the father's suit. This is like, this is the best thing he has. This is probably the article of clothing he's most proud of that's most significant to his dignity and shows his position as a leader of a family. He says, bring that robe and put it on him. The son, after the long journey, would have returned home with tattered clothes and sandals worn out from his poverty and from the journey. But on this filthy son, filled with shame, the father wraps his splendid robe and puts it on him. And then he says, and put a ring on his hand. So he takes the family ring that's a symbol of who they are, probably with some sort of crest or family symbol on it. And he takes it and he puts it on the son's hand. And then he says, and shoes on his feet. So a robe to cover him, a ring to put on his finger to let him know and everyone else who he is, and shoes to put on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Verse 25, now his older son was in the field, the one that stayed behind. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I've served you or I've slaved away for you. And I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found." We don't know whether the older brother came in and joined the party and celebrated, had a change of heart or not. But we do know this, that the younger son, who had squandered all of his inheritance, was welcomed back home with a robe, with a ring, and with shoes. Now, every sin has two levels of consequence. This, this insight was uh, taught to me by Don Riker at Teaching the Word Ministries a number of years ago. Every sin has a legal consequence and has an emotional consequence. So legally, when there's sin, we are guilty. That's the legal consequence of sin. We're guilty before a righteous and holy God. But there's also an emotional consequence. And the emotional consequence of sin is shame. We are naked and ashamed. And so when people say, I feel guilty, I mean, that's a very real feeling, but perhaps, perhaps what we're actually trying to get at is the shame that's the result of the guilt. And so what we're feeling is actually ashamed. And the experience of shame is nudity. Think about Adam and Eve. When they ate of the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat of, what's their experience? Their eyes are opened and they realized that they were naked, and they were naked and ashamed. In Genesis 3, 21, this is after the curse, after the ground has been cursed, after Adam has been told he's going to work and toil the ground, and it's going to kick back against him and push against him with thorns and thistles, and the woman would bear life with great pain. It says this at the end of chapter 
3 of Genesis in verse 21. It's a simple statement. And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins and clothed them. God sacrifices a lamb and takes the clothing of that lamb, the skin of that lamb, and creates a garment to cover his children who are naked and ashamed. In other words, he doesn't expose their nakedness, which is always the fear of shame that will be exposed, but he covers it with righteousness. This is the same thing that the father does for his son when he returns home. The son is saying, I'm not even worthy to be your servant. He's coming with the shame of what he's done. But the father takes the robe, the robe of righteousness, the robe signifying his love and his character, and wraps his son in it and says to his son, not only are you covered, but then he sticks the, th- the ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. The father not only clothes the son in that story, God not only clothes the shame of Adam and Eve back at the beginning, God, through his son, continues to clothe us with righteousness today. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us know what it's like to be guilty before God and to feel the shame and the nakedness that results from that. But in Christ, we are wrapped in his robe of righteousness. In Christ, the Father has placed his ring on our finger, which is a sign of our adoption as sons and daughters to the Father. And he has fitted our feet with shoes. Not only are we covered, not only are we told who we are through the ring, but we're also given shoes that we might walk in the same way, to walk in his ways. And so I leave you with this question. Have you allowed the Father to put his robe around you, to put his finger on your hand, and to cover your feet with his shoes? I pray that you have, and I pray that as you continue to think through this theme, that you will be dressed with all of the spiritual clothing that God has for you. Be blessed. Have a great day.